How are we doing? Awesome. Morning. All right. We had a good weekend. Good to be with you. Motley crew. You're done. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Hey. So I just want to go through just a, a, a couple of quick things. So one of the things we're going to do is I want to go through just a little bit of what I would consider to be like an ultimate practice session. And then, pardon? Before we start? Yes. Jessica's doing a uh, base camp. Yes. I just talked about that this morning with Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Stop the horses. Stop the show. Sorry. I'm excited. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure they did Yeah. She's going to do great. I'm excited. What, what, are we, what are you talking about? you know? That's a great question. Which I'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Right. Sounds like a plan. All right, excellent. All right, so you know, look, we, we in, the, in the morning, like we'll we'll do all these different things, right? So we'll do the. It just I just want to give you a, some of you guys a little bit of a history. So the first thing that we 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 chant off is a thing that's in Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. Who was it that commissioned Napoleon Hill to write Think and Grow Rich? Does anybody know? Carnegie, 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 right? Yeah. So Carnegie basically said, hey, look, put this thing together. And then he came up with this big book. In fact, actually, I think I saw uh, someone walk in here. I'm trying to remember who it was with 17 Laws of Success. Oh, who was that? That's your guy. Aaron. Aaron, yes. I think I, I watched him walk in with that this, last week. It's like the thing that's like this yeah. thick, right? Yeah. So he, he, he walked in here with that. Um, and what was interesting is that that was the original book. If you guys don't know that, and it's—I mean—it's a sensational book. In fact, I remember I think Paul some time ago you were even talking about it with me. But um, but then Carnegie said, "Look, that is way, 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 way too big. No one's ever going to read that." In fact, just out of curiosity, how many people have read that book? Yeah. Okay, the Seventeen Laws of Success. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, I have. In fact, actually, it's one of those ones where you can just dive into it anywhere and just hit play, and it is absolutely sensational because no matter where you are in that book of um, Napoleon Hills, uh, it is absolutely awesome. But then he said, look, you know what, no one's going to read this, you need to shrink this thing down, and hence he created the book Think and Grow Rich. That's really, really what ended up happening from that from that standpoint, and so now we have the book Think and Grow Rich. So, I don't know, somewhere in the first 20, 30, 40 pages of that book, maybe it's even earlier than that, is the thing that we chant off first, where the Flint Hill said, "Look, read this every day, memorize it, know it." Uh, unless you're know, and I would say, unless you're doing that at home. But I look at the fact of the people who were talked about in that book, from Thomas Edison to Carnegie to Ford to miss another ones, uh, Rockefeller to all of these major like just titans of industry, right? Like them or not, I mean, all of them had this belief. That in some words, what they said is what came about in their lives. And so that's where that first part comes from is the same standpoint of where the ending where it says, hey, I'll memorize this. And that's not that's not me saying that. That's 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 actually what's actually you go to the book, you'll read it. That's what it says actually in the book. Then in basically 2009, when things were at their absolute worst, we read the 12 steps, the sum of success. And that 12 steps is really built around the idea that. It was fascinating to watch in the most difficult times of the industry is that agents really could not figure out what to do. And so I remember sitting down with John and Rob and I just said, hey, let's sit down and let's define specifically what it is that an agent should be doing on a daily basis. And that's where those 12 steps, 12, oh my goodness, I can't even say it today, 12 steps to the sum of success. I remember when they were saying that, Vladimir, I was like, are you sure you want to call it that? Because that is really a ton of right? <laughs> but, um, but that's where that's where that came from. It was basically just the fact of an agent realize, or realizing an agent does all these things. And when the market was at its worst, they didn't have the liberty, if this makes sense, to make mistakes or to do the wrong thing. Everything mattered, every minute of every day to do it right, or they were going to, in so many words, starve to death from this industry. So um, that's where that comes from. Then, of course, in fact, there she is. She's back. She should be making her move and everything else. She's back. Lindsay Wardle uh, just got back from Tony Robbins. And, uh, we give it just a mild uh, manner of enthusiasm here. But then the part of where now I am the voice is really, again, the thing that is resonating. Some of you have been to Unleash the Power within at least a right, handful of you. You can raise your hand, Maria. You can raise I do. Okay. Who's been there? All right. 
right? So, so that's a huge thing there, right? I mean, just again, just who's going to control your life? And then, of course, the affirmations, incantations. People say, well, you know, that's not what I really like to do. It's not what I feel like. I don't believe every one of them. I don't know if I drink water daily, you know, whatever you're going to say to yourself. But the fact is, is that, look, I, I just know this, that the thousands of thoughts that you will have on a daily basis, right, are, are, are almost always more negative than the things that are on those affirmations. And so if you didn't know this, where those affirmations came from, they weren't ones that I personally came up with. I think I came up with a few of them. But it was really when we all got together and we just, from in the very beginnings of the company, where we had everyone submit two, three, four, five affirmations and then kind of galvanize those all together. And that's where that list comes from. So really, that list, if, if, if it makes sense, comes from your peers from that standpoint. So, okay, so then that's done, right? And then we take the time to do what? Journal. To journal. And the whole, the whole, the whole point of the journal, like when people show up and they, <clears throat> they see the journal, and the, the key component of the journal, why we switch even the music, even the mood, the the, 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 the feeling in the room, is because we go to a place that once we've kind of got, if you would say, a little bit of that enthusiasm, got the cobwebs off of the, of the morning, is to simply write down the very things that you're grateful for, to define the things that mean the most to you. Right, and whether that be you know from your family to your kids to your future to your existence to your health to your business, whatever it may be, but really taking the time and the energy to define things that you're grateful for. As a general statement, we'll call it a 1010, which means you write down 10 things that you're grateful for. Then once you have filtered out, in so many words, what the hope is, <coughs> excuse me, once you've filtered out, what we hope is is all the fear, right? That you're coming from a place of absolute, you know, gratitude, right? Thankfulness in your heart is that you're able to define the things that you really want to have happen. Your ability to manifest and to intend the things that you want to have happen and come out out of your life. So just just remember how important it is the segue between your gratitudes and your intentions. And I just would would challenge you with the idea that you can get essentially anything you want if you come from the right place, right? And the whole point is to come from a place of abundance. So just, you know, every real segment of, of what we do every day isn't just like, well, you know, hey, we thought we'd just try that, and it would be just, you know, something that really doesn't matter, but we'll do it anyway. So just, just know that like, all the way to that point, it really is something that we, we really calculated. It's like trial, trial and error to this point, to knowing that, Look, if we consistently do that, and you do that with the right enthusiasm, the right energy, the right focus, good things will happen. Then, all right, so then as a general statement, what we've talked about doing is, and what we've done in the past is we'll give a little message, right? Just like I'm giving right now. This is the little message in so many words that I'm giving. But from that standpoint, then what we want to do, and I want to just, I want to shift things the way that we're doing things, is to get a lot more heavy into this idea and the principles of our skill sets. If you look at this business, in the end of the day, you can be as accountable as you possibly could be. You can have the best mindset on the planet. You can move with the greatest amounts of purpose. You could have all of the, 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 the plans, the schedule, the goals in place. But if you don't have the skill sets in place, it is almost next to impossible to succeed at the highest level of this business. So just remember how important it is that you elevate your skill set. And what I mean by that is this the simple. Your ability to communicate. It is your ability to be able to share your message, to influence another human being, to lead them down the path, to be able to persuade them, to influence them, to move them into action, to signing contracts, making an appointment or taking an appointment with you, right? Whether it be a buyer or a seller, it doesn't matter. All of the above. So as, as, we, as we move through that, one of the things I, I just want to point out to you is that, look, the, the, the skills that you have to develop in relationship to your sphere of influence, to your lead follow-up, to getting price reductions, right, to taking a listing, to putting a buyer under contract, right, to objection handle, to close the sale. So I just want to remind you of the importance of the dynamics of building those skill sets and that they aren't something to just go, ah, well, you know what, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal. It's all of the small little nuances, right? I always say that winning is in the details. And if the details aren't paid attention to, you'll start, you'll just, you'll just keep getting the same results over and over and over again because of the fact of the lack of skill sets that we have. 
How many love to role play in front of lots of people? Is that like your highlight? Like the only Greg and Lindsay raise their hand. Perfect. Right? Right? So so I just I just want to point out that 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 maybe as you're moving through this, right, the process of just mastering this business, that just maybe as you move through it, that there's so much more to learn through this the standpoint of your skill sets and your ability to to communicate. So from that standpoint, what I want to do is I just want to outline just a, a couple of things of what I would would recommend in relationship to having an extraordinary skill set or communication building process. Okay, so just a couple of things. So, so the first thing that, that I want to do right is I want to master a certain script, whatever that is. Right, the one that's uh, top of mind to me is the one that we deal with when we're talking to our sphere of influence. But for me, I just want to put this outline here. For me, I would want to chant, ooh, chant, chant. Chant that script, right? You know, like the the, the, the monks of old, right? We're going to chant that script. And as a general statement, depending on the the, the amount of that script or what's in that script, I, I what I want to make it to where is that when I can glance at a piece of paper or I read a script, whatever that may be, is that it becomes so comfortable to me that it's as if it was my own, you know, my own deal, my own my own idea, and that it came from me, like from really inside, not that it was something I manufactured. So for me, chanting, as a general statement, for many years of the very beginnings of my career, I would take certain scripts and I would I would, I would, would chant that very script 10 times out loud, all right? Just over and over and over again. Now, <coughs> excuse me, in a meeting like today, as an example, what I would be doing is I'd probably take that script and chant it out, out loud maybe one to three times, depending on the size of it, right? Maybe not the whole lifting presentation, but if I was just going to do like the sphere of influence, I might do that one, two, or three times. But I just I want to get myself comfortable with chanting the script, right? Okay. So then the second thing I'm going to do is that what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how to use that script. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to be up here, right, as an example, and I would demonstrate just like we have in the many times with the listing presentation. Some of you have or haven't seen it, but I'm going to demonstrate the fact of how to use that script and how to actually be effective in doing that. All right? Then the third, so I, and then in that demonstration, I'm usually going to have the another agent, of course, or one of the other leaders in the company be my role play partner moving through that pro process. Now, I want, you, I want you to think about something in regards to this demonstration or this role play that we talk about. What I want to make sure that happens is, is that we have a positive outcome. And what I mean by that is that, look, if, if you could be an absolute maniac as a role play partner and make the entire situation incredibly difficult, but that's not really the outcome that you're looking for, right? What I want is I want a positive outcome from that standpoint. It doesn't mean that you can't come up with objections, right? And depending on the scenario, I'll usually say, hey, let's do one to three objections in that script. But what I would challenge you to do is that you're looking for that positive outcome, meaning that you're looking for a yes to occur inside that role, in that role play. Does that make sense? So if I if I if, if once I demonstrate what I'm going to do is I'm going to first say number one, what did I do well, right? What did you like that I did well? Number two, what did I not do so well, right? Right? And I'm, I I and then the thing is I often will say this is what do I do? What would I do differently? Meaning. And let's 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 point point this out. People, your group, your peers are pointing out what did you do well, right? And I want at least my, my minimum standard is I want at least three things that I'm going to point out that you did extremely well in any type of role play situation. Then I want to make sure that okay, what did I, I not do so well, right? Then I want to point out you know again one to three things. And then what I want is the person who gave the role play. So if I'm the one demonstrating. I'm going to define, I'm going to take in what was said here, but I might say, you know what, this is some of the stuff that I might do differently, right? And you might even say, hey, this is what I like to do, but I'm really just asking question, what would I do different in that? And I'm a firm believer that no matter what presentation I give, whether it be today like I'm talking right now, or I'm in front of someone live, like literally giving a call or an actual listening presentation, I'm a firm believer that can always get better. Always get better, right? So. So when I'm looking at this, I'm going to say, look, first, let's chant that script. Two, let's demonstrate that script. And then the third is I want to then coach someone through the script. Okay? 
So not only am I going to demonstrate myself, but then I'm going to say, okay, and Greg's done this many times with me. But then I say, hey, look, come in. I'm going to coach him through that script. So we take that same script. Let's just let's just assume that it's this SOI script, and I'm going to take that same script, and I'm going to go through that. Right. So I'm going to chant. I'm going to demonstrate. And I'm going to coach him through it. So he's going to do it, and the same things are going to apply. Hey, what did he do well? What did he not do so well? Okay, what grade would you do differently? But I might stop him through the process. You've had me do that a few times, haven't you, Greg? Just right, just a few. And just say, hey, wait, hold on a second here. Let's do this part just a little bit differently. Let's do it again. And so I, I show that as a coaching. Then the fourth part of that is this, and that is, is that we break off, right? And I'm going to say in partnerships or in partner or partnerships, and we break off and we do the same scripts independently. And then if I am one of the leaders in the room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk, if that makes sense, or oops, walk around and make sure that, you know, people are role playing and scripting and, you know, and, and then do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to do that all the way until the bitter end. And then probably five minutes before I'm going to then simply review. And for me, that's what I, 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 I that's what a skill building day should look like. I should be able to chant the script, I should be able to demonstrate the script because I've mastered it myself. I then, from that standpoint, I'm going to role play with someone up in front here as an example with my group. And then I'm going to go back, break off with my partners and role play in some areas privately, whether it be in this room or you walk out into the hallways, but you break off and then you come back five minutes forward. In so many words, you know, the question I always want to ask at the review is, hey, what are your takeaways? What did you learn from today? And then we're done. And I can tell you that I've done that for so many years. You know, I mean, if I took the 24 years of my career, I've done that probably nearly 20 years of it. And so that every script, every dialogue, people say, well, wait a second, that, that, well, that came from that script. Right? Everything I say is scripted. Me even saying that I'm scripted is a script that I always say. Everything I say is a script. As I, I don't know anything I really say. In fact, I remember... Many agents have come to me, have been around me a long time. They go, I'm amazed that you actually are still excited to say the same thing over and over and over and over and over. How many times have you, I mean, can you, so again, on great. you cannot even tell me the number of times you've heard me or the number of times I have put up here the foundation of this company and training. How many times have I role played it for Selvan or an expired or a sign call or a just listed, a just sold? or a lead follow-up, or how we get a price reduction, or how we get a presentation. None of it. I've done it over and over and over and over and over again. Because every time I get just, 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 it might be just a little bit better, but every time it starts to widen the gap so that I can separate myself from my competition. So I just, that, that flow is something that should be consistently happening. And then just as a side note, because I see you guys in here, and not as a criticism, because I think it's great that you're doing it, but I would encourage you to stand up while you're doing this. I would encourage you to stand up while you're prospecting, and, I'm, and, and I can tell you I'm very passionate about that, because I recognize that you're, the way in which your body goes, the energy, the way in which it flows, has, has a lot to do with it. Being hunched over, sitting on the edge of your seat is nowhere near as powerful than standing up, walking around, and having the enthusiasm and the energy that can come from your body. So. Russ, did I miss anything in that process, right? I mean, we're going to demonstrate the demonstration, if that makes sense. We may not get to it today, just from a standpoint of time. What's that time? Say, eight? is that 8.30? Yeah. Okay. So so now we have this outline. Anything that you want to say? Am I missing anything, Lance? Russ? Right? Even, I mean, okay. How many people are really excited about that? <laughs> One person. Perfect. <laughs> All right. April's excited. All right. One person. Okay, so just remember, um, you know, a lot of growth happens through this process. And uh, I would just challenge you to, uh, you know, I, I actually, I'll, we have enough time. Let me just, this is the last thing I'll say on a little story, though. But it's, I remember when I started my career, I started at Coldwell Banker. Uh, it's not the Coldwell Banker that, that's there today. It was owned by uh, the Webbers. Certainly, Leslie, you were there. And you were there, too, right? Hey, were you there when the Webbers owned it? Yeah, you were. Um, so I remember starting off my career, and I was so petrified for anyone to hear anything that I would absolutely do. And so I remember uh, I would go into these, these we, had, we had these, there was two rooms that were at this Union Park office, and the rooms were about this big. 
and there were just these two little calling rooms. And I was so nervous, so so scared, or just simply maybe even just my ego. I didn't want anyone to hear me. I didn't want, I didn't want to hear me making a mistake. I didn't want anybody to hear what I had to say. And so I would go into this little room, and I still remember my first calls in prospecting ever were in this little room. And I remember I got these flashcards um, early on in my first month. And they were flashcards of, of, of Mike Berry. They were some of his scripts. And I remember I started memorizing them, learning them, and developing them. Yeah, did I tweak them? Of course I tweaked them. Did I say things I thought sound a little better? Of course I did. Did I even watch over the years? Interestingly enough, I watched him change his script over and over and over again until even he came to something what he felt refined. Um, I, I remember in the first two or three years, I don't know if you remember this, Leslie, how many times the script would change that he would kick out. I don't know if you ever remember that. Where, you know, it, I, I was, it, it, I remember when the for seller owner script went through three different, four different, different models from, you know, with lots of buyers and sellers in the area, how may I help you to, for it first used to say, the very first one I ever read was simply, hi, my name is George Morris, if you own our home for sale, the I am, you are great, hey, I want to come out, and I just and immediately go for the appointment. But I, 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 all I know is, is that it's almost impossible for you to figure out what script works if you don't memorize a script. Think about what I just said. It is almost impossible for you to know what to say, like right, if you want to tweak the script, if you don't memorize some script. And whatever that script may be, although right, we have our script book that we work real heavily out of, the fact is, is that you have to memorize scripts to be able to figure out what scripts do or don't do and how good they are or aren't so good. And if you don't do that, then the problem is, is you'll take the liberties early on before you ever memorized anything or got good at anything, and you'll tweak it, change it, think it needs to be something different, and the fact is, is that you don't even have enough experience to be able to do that. So I just would challenge you to consider that, not that every script is perfect, but I think there is great wisdom in memorizing the scripts that are here. And as you do so, it allows you the ability to understand what you want to say or not want to say because it has to do with the fact that you've memorized it. And when you know what to say, the only focal point becomes the people that you're with. When you know what to say, you're not worried about what you're going to say. You're worried about how it will be received. You're worried about the energy in the room. You're worried about the connection in the room. You're worried about the leadership that you're providing inside the room because you know what to say. And the only way that you get to the levels of hundreds of thousands of dollars in this industry, or millions of dollars in this industry, is if you are a master of what to say. At the end of the day, again, you have all the accountability in the world. You can have all the great mindset. You can have all the goals that you've set, all the purposes that drive you. But in the end, the thing that will be the difference maker will be your ability to communicate. And that's the one thing, no matter how good any of us get in this room, no matter how exceptional any of us get in this room, we can always improve our communication skills. And man, I'll tell you, this has been a year for me where I've realized so much of my shortcomings in regards to the way in which I communicate. And it is unbelievable what you can continue to learn in the way in which you communicate. Don't ever stop learning from that standpoint. <coughs> okay, so finish that story. So I finally, I learned enough scripts that this makes sense to where I felt comfortable and that's when I would prospect next to, uh, 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 gosh, um, awesome. uh, yes, but he was over by, he was back further. He was back over by Leslie. He was a big shot like Leslie had his own office, right? But uh, no, uh, Linda, Linda Gare. Oh, Linda Gare. Uh, and um, Get her on is it, was it Galen Johnson? Galen, Galen Johnson. Yeah. yeah. And I remember I finally was able to sit in a cubicle and people hear me. <laughs> and I wasn't freaking my mind out. And to where actually I took great pride in the fact that I was prospecting because no one else was. I took great excitement in setting a standard that I openly displayed the fact that I actually did my job. And just wherever it's worth, my first year in the business, right, I, I sold 33 homes, but I will tell you, and I totally screwed up tons of it. And I will tell you that I probably, I don't know the exact number, but I know that I took probably nearly 50 listings my first year in business. And I totally screwed up so many of them. Like royally, right? Not that anything dishonest, I just overpriced, never got them sold, didn't do it all the right way from the standpoint of the way I communicated, right? 
I still remember when I didn't realize uh, I, my worst my worst deal ever in my first year at desk was this: is that you know how like sometimes on the title report it'll come up with a, a, someone whose name was kind of looks like the same person, and they had filed bankruptcy, but this client had not filed bankruptcy, but it looked like it was the same person, but it wasn't really the same person. And I remember I called him, not in a delicate way, I basically, her name was Teresa. Uh, I'm gonna give you the last name, for the name <laughs> those are, but her name was Teresa. And I remember I said to Teresa, first words out of my mouth, why didn't you tell me you filed bankruptcy? And she just went, I just remember, Explosion, crazy, cuckoo bird, cray cray, all the things. Like, I lost my mind. And after the first transaction I ever closed on, this was the, I, the there was an inspection that had to be done. In fact, it was a, a deal with Linda, by the way. That was my first transaction. But I still remember they had moved out of the home and there was a delay in closing, not knowing how to properly set future pace and all these different things. I still remember if it is, this was his comment. If I was in Salt Lake City, I would come to your office and physically beat the crap out of you. <laughs> it's a little more aggressive than that, actually. I just can't use the language here at the front of the room. And it was just because I, I did not know how to control it. So, look, I screwed up everything. But one thing I didn't screw up is that I was I dedicated my time and my energy to knowing what to say. And I, just, I realized that that segue to getting better and better and improving every single day, although it seems tedious, monotonous, boring, uncomfortable, uh, even borderline anno uh, uh, yeah, annoying through the process, I tell you, 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 you will not lose by mastering the ability to communicate. Don't underestimate. It is the greatest skill that you will ever learn, whether that be with your own children, with your intimate relationships, your friendships, in business. It is the most important thing that you will do. It will be your ability to communicate. So, make sense? Okay, so tomorrow uh, I will be here. We're going to do this exactly, and we're going to work on the sphere of influence. Okay, and we're going to go through this exact process. We're going to chant it, then I'm going to demonstrate it, then I'm going to pick on one of you to role play back with me, Maria, right? Like you? You're going to be here? Yeah. 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 Perfect. <laughs> and then um, we're going to break off into some partnerships. You guys will each role play at it. We'll come back and then we'll just review like at 835 and we'll go through that process. All right. And we'll start with rip, ripping through a handful of different uh, scripts and dialogues and just, you know, and then, and then, and then this the other thing. When you keep getting, like, you may even use a different script, but like when you keep getting objections, like if you're, I mean, if you're calling for sale or if you're calling expires or you're calling, you're just listed. Or let's just say you feel really uncomfortable when you're calling your sphere of influence. Right? It took me a long time to figure out how to make that a comfortable process. Who was I just talking to last week? Uh, about they said it took they took ten years before they started calling their sphere. And I took five, just for the record. Because I was so uncomfortable doing it. And, and I just, I, it took me a long time to figure out how to, to do that effectively. So, you know, on, on tomorrow, come with some of those questions. Come with some of those ideas. Or when you're feeling that discomfort, you know, let's, let's figure it out. Because, look, that's a gold mine for you. It's an acre of diamonds that are right below your feet as to what you can do. It's the single greatest asset that you will ever build in this industry, which will be your sphere of influence. And so we'll talk maybe just like my little two-minute message before will be, about the importance of that and what it really means. General statement of sphere, by the way. It's not getting easier to do your business and your sales prices are not going up. It means you are not working your sphere. Or with all your holiday parties when they say things like, are you still in real estate? You're totally screwing this thing up. Just <laughs> if that's what is asked of you. If they say, now are you in real estate? I can't remember. Just for the record, you're screwing it up. Okay? Uh, any thoughts? Comments? That was a great message, but off the message, Please. it's Stephanie Barnes' birthday. Ah, so I think we can call the, the national day. holiday. The national holiday, so we need to blow up her phone, so put her number up there, and any of you that know her, text her a happy birthday. Does anybody know her number by heart? Do you have it right there? 680-640-0. Very easy. So if you know Stephanie, you should send her a little birthday message. I think that's easy. All right, there we go. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, any other thoughts? Okay, all right, let's roll. Here we go.